everybody, it's Yu-Gi-Oh! Master 88 here, and welcome to another deck profile. Today I will be covering the fourth and final model of the of my newly reconstructed Ori Kalkos Challenge series. Um, this is the hard mode difficulty that I alluded to a number of months back. It is finally constructed, it is completed, and I am excited to show you all this. So enough of my rambling. What do you all say we get started, shall we? Now some now some stuff in here you'll recognize from um, easy mode, normal mode, and nightmare mode, but a lot of the stuff, uh, a lot of the new stuff that I made for this particular model is exclusive to this model only. There's actually a me a, a mechanic to this. Um, a me well. A mechanic slash gimmick to this model, but you'll see it after a while. Anyway, let's get started. Enough of my rambling. Anyway, we got good old Ori Kalko Shaman and Ori Kalko Sorcerer. As you all know, these are the headliners of my of of the normal difficulty, and they're also the headliners of the hard mode. Um. Anyway, um. Um, I'll, I'll go over these two in particular. So basically what Shaman does is when he's normal summoned, I can special summon a level 4 lower Ori Kalkos monster from my hand or deck. I can shuffle up to three cards of different names in my grave from my graveyard back into my deck, then I can draw two cards. I can change his level from 1 to 8, but I can only use, but I can only control one Ori Kalkos Shaman on the field, and I can only use and I can only use each effect, uh, each effect of Ori Kalko's Shaman once per turn only. So, so that's how he works. And as for um, Ori Kalko's uh, Sorcerer, when he's summoned by the effect of a level 4 or lower Ori Kalko's Monster, I can special summon a level 4 or lower Ori Kalko's Monster from my hand or deck. I can target a fusion, synchro, or exes monster in my graveyard and return it to the extra deck. I can change his level from 1 to 8. And if this card is used for a fusion, synchro, or exes summon, I can add an Orichalcos card from my deck or graveyard to my hand. I can only control one Orichalcos sorcerer on the field. I can only use each of his effects once per turn only. So they're powerful and balanced at the same time. Anyway, uh, next up, we got good old Ori Kalkos Fairy and Ori Kalkos Priestess. Um, you'll rec I'm pretty sure you recognize these two from a few of the past models as well. So what Fairy does is, if it's sent for, to the graveyard for the synchro summon of a dark attributed synch uh, um, a mo synchro monster, I gain 2,000 life points. And if I would take effect damage, I can discard this card to make my opponent take the effect damage instead. Then I gain life points equal to the effect damage my opponent took. So it's very good at dealing with burn decks. And what Priestess does is during each of my standby phases, I gain 500 life points for each Ori Kalkos monster I control. That's including itself. And once per turn only, I can pay a thousand life points to special summon a level four lower Ori Kalkos monster from my graveyard. However, its effects are negated, and I can only and I can and I can only control one Ori Kalkos priestess. So that's what priestess does. Next up, we get into um, um, the exclusive um, one of the exclusive monsters for this mode. Introducing folks, Ori Kalkos Chimera. Now here is what this little guy does. So this card's name is also always treated as Ori Kalkos Kitora. If I control an Ori Kalkos monster, I can special summon this card from my hand. All battle damage I take drops to zero, and it cannot be destroyed by battle. And if this card is destroyed by my opponent's card effect, I can activate one of the following effects. I can special summon a level 4 or lower Ori Kalkos monster from my graveyard, and this special summon is treated as a normal summon. So basically, um, say I summon Ori Kalkos Shaman, special summon Ori Kalkos Shaman, 
that special summon is treated as a normal summon, meaning Shaman will get his normal summon effects off. So that's pretty cool. And also the other the the and also um the 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 other effect, and I forgot to mention this, I'm sorry, is I can special summon one Orikalko Shinros from my hand or my deck, but I but I can only control one Orikalko's Chimera. So essentially this is a different version of an alternative to Kitora, but a bit more powerful. Next up, we have good old Shunaros, Dexia, Aristaros, and Divine Serpent. I should not have to explain these guys. If you've seen my models in the past or other Orichalcos users, and if you've seen Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu -Oh! Duel Monsters Season 4, you should know how these work. So I won't, ex I won't explain these. Next up, one Orichalcos Gygus. Simply, every time he's destroyed, he comes back 500 points stronger, but I have to skip my, my draw phase, my next draw phase, every time he resurrects. It's that simple. One Orichalcos Magus, essentially, while I got Magus on board, um, I, he, uh, this card gains 400 attack for every other Orichalcos monster I control, so he can become pretty big. Next up, we got good old Orichalco Searcher. This is um, this is also used in my um, normal mode version. Essentially, um, this is pretty much an Orichalco Safide version of Jinzo. And what he does is, if it's sent to the graveyard, I can add two Orichalco cards from my deck to my hand. So essentially, I can pretty much drop him in the grave by anything. And I get two cards for free. Next up, we got Orikalko Soldier. And what he does is, cannot be normal summon or set. If you control an Orikalko's field spell, you can special summon this card from your hand. Once per turn only, you can destroy one card on the field. This effect cannot be used if you don't control an Orikalko's field spell. And while this card is face up on the field, Monsters my opponent controls lose 200 attack during each of their standby phases. So this thing is a pretty big beat stick. Next up, we get to more hard mode exclusive content for you all. I'm running two copies of Ori Kalkos Bug. So this little guy is very interesting. He's a, he's a dark level free insect, 500-500 attack and defense and what he does is this if this card is sent from the field to the graveyard special summon one level four lower orichalcus monster from your deck or graveyard except orichalcus bug this special summon is treated as a normal summon you can only use the, this effect once per turn only so essentially just like orichalcus chimera say i use bug to special summon orichalcus shaman or sorcerer, I can get. Uh, I, I well, let me reward my words there. I apologize. I'm getting cards mixed up. Say I use Bug's effect to special summon Orichalco Shaman. Since uh, since the effect here states this special summon is treated as a normal summon, Shaman will get his normal summon effects off. It's it's just like with Chimera. So next up, we're going to get to a really cool one. Two copies of Orichalco Slime. This is essentially a Orichalco's version of Revival Jam. So here's how this guy works. He's a dark level 4, Aqua, 1000 attack and defense. Cannot be normal summoner set. If this card is destroyed... If this card is destroyed, special summon it in, in defense position. Oh, made a little typo though. I should I should just put it face up defense position, but you guys should know. If this card is special summoned by its own effect, gain 1,000 life points. You can discard this card uh, to, uh, to special summon one level 4 or lower or countless monster from your graveyard. Except this card. This, card, this special summon is treated as a normal summon. 
You can only use each effect of Orikalko uh, Slime once per turn only. You can only control one Orikalko Slime. So once again, another way to special summon out Shaman, and, and since just like with the other two, the special summon is treated as the normal summon, Orikalko Shaman gets his when this card is normal, if this card is normal summon effect. So that's Orikalko Slime in a nutshell. Next up, we got two copies of Orikalko Zextros. Now this guy has a very interesting effect. So he cannot be special summoned unless I control an Orikalko's field spell. If this card is normal summoned, equip one Orikalko's monster on the field to this card. This card gains attack equal to half of the original attack of the monster that is, that, that is equipped to this card. If the equipped monster was a monster your opponent controlled, this card can attack all. Can, this card can attack your opponent directly. You can only control one Orifalco Zextros. So basically, how this guy works is when he's normal summoned, I can equip one Orifalco's monster on the field to this card, and he gains attack equal to half the attack of the original monster that is equipped to it. And if the equipped monster was a monster my opponent controls, say if my opponent controlled an Orichalcos monster, then I'm able, then this card can attack directly. So it can become a very big beat stick. Next up, we got Orichalcos Disciple. Now here, now it, Disciple here is a dark attribute level three spellcaster, zero attack, zero defense. If your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can treat this card as a dark tuner monster for a dark synchro summon this turn. And if you do, its level becomes 12. You can discard this card, add one Orichalcus card in your deck or graveyard to your hand. If this card is normal summon, you can treat this card as a tuner. You can only use each effect of Orichalcos Disciple once per turn only. You can only control an Orichalcos Disciple. So essentially, folks, this guy here has the capabilities for me to, do, to either do a standard Synchro Summon or a Dark Synchro Summon. Which, if you've seen my Orichalcos Nightmare Mode difficulty build, there are Dark Synchros in that build. So this monster in particular will be able to work with that. But inside the Nightmare Mode, um, Neo Orichalco Shaman, which is one of the monsters in that build, it has the capabilities of becoming a Dark Tuner monster for to, to allow it to be used for a Dark Synchro Summon. But that's Neo Orichalco. This is the Nightmare Mode we're talking about, though. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Next up, Orichalco Legend. So what this guy is... He has a dark one, two, three, four, three, four, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's a dark level 10, question mark attack, 3,000 defense. Cannot be normal summoned or set. Cannot be special summoned except by its own effect. If an Orichalcos field spell is sent to the graveyard, you can pay 2,000 light points to special summon this card from your hand. And once per turn only, you can add an Orichalcos card from your graveyard to your hand. This card's attack is equal to half of your life points. You can only control one Orichalcos legend on the field. So, yeah, this guy is pretty brusted. I mean, it can become a big beat stick. It has searchability. Very good card. Next up, the final monster in the deck, Orichalcos QB. So what QB does is it is a dark one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's a level 10, 3,500 attack, 2,800 defense points. Cannot be normal summoned or set. Must first be special summoned by banishing five Orichalcos monsters from your deck while you control an Orichalcos field spell. You can pay 2,000 life points, banish your opponent's entire hand. 
If this card is destroyed, shuffle this card back into the deck. Then special summon one level four lower or a calculus monster from your hand or deck. This special summon is treated as a normal summon. You can only use each effect of Orichalcus QB once per turn only. You can only control one Orichalcus QB. So basically, I can get rid of my opponent's entire hand and say this thing is destroyed. I can recycle it back and then special summon an Orichalcus monster from my uh, from my from my uh, hand or deck. So since just like all the previous harmonics of monsters, since the special summon is treated as a normal summon, since the special summon is treated as a normal summon, I summon Orikalka Shaman off this, Orikalka Shaman will get his normal summon effect. So that's pretty much the monster lineup, and that's pretty much how the how the how this special mechanic with these special monsters work. They're meant to they're meant specifically to get out an Orikalko Shaman and allowing his and shaman's special summon to be treated as a normal summon, allowing him to get his effect off. That's the exclusive mechanic to this build. No other no, none of my other builds have this mechanic. I perfected this for this build. Anyway. Let's get to the spell cards. As with all Orichalcos Duelists and Orichalcos Challenges alike, you all know that you have to run Triple Seal of Orichalcos. Um, um, this Seal of Orichalcos is a, is a, um, a redone version of the old Upper Deck, Enter Enter old Upper Deck Entertainment UDE Seal of Orichalcos. Um, this was, um, remastered by me and a friend of mine, Winter Moon. Shout out to Winter Moon. But for those who don't know how my version of the Seal Mori Calcus works, I will read it. Cannot leave, can, cannot leave the field. Also, its activation and effects cannot be negated. All monsters you control gain 500 attack points. Your spell and trap card zones are also treated as monsters, main monster zones. Monsters in your back main monster zones cannot be attacked while you control monsters in your front main monster zones. You can move monsters from your main monster zones to your unused spell and trap card zones or from your spell and trap card zones to your unused, to unused original main monster zones, and vice versa. If a card or effect is activated, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. The soul of whichever duelist loses the stool is forfeited to winner. The discard from your hand to negate and destroy a card effect, this is a spell speed for negation effect. It is spell speed for, um, that's how good it is. Um, like I said, this is a... This is a remake of the old Upper Deck Entertainment Seal, which it's which which is basically what this is. It's a remake of that exact copy of their Seal of Orichalcos. So essentially, I'll go over this one more time. Um, I can basically go back and forth uh, between the monster zones and spell and trap card zones, since the spell and trap card zones are treated as monster zones while it's in the field. All monsters I control gain 500 attack, and I can ditch this thing from my hand to the graveyard to spell speed for negate any card effect, including counter traps. This thing has been documented by Upper Deck Entertainment to negate counter traps. That's how powerful the discard to the graveyard to negate a card effect is. It's very busted. Which is why this is only meant to be used with an Orichalcos deck. This is not to be used outside of it. It would be very busted if that was the case. Next up, we have the two layers to make the seal more powerful. Orichalcos Dutros and Orichalcos Tritos. Basically, basically, the only additional effects that Dutros gives to the seal of Orichalcos is during my main phase, I gain 500 life points for each monster I control. And if I would somehow um, get direct attacked, 
I contribute a monster to negate that attack. Also, Orichalcos Tritos protects my monsters from your spell and trap cards. So that's how all three layers work. Next up, we got two copies of Chosen Destiny. I can pay a thousand life points to activate one of these effects. I can either add an Orichalcos card from my deck to my hand, or I can destroy one, ignoring its effects. Like for example, say I'm about to have, a, uh, say I'm about to lose my own soul in my own Orichalcos challenge. I can activate Chosen Destiny, blow up my no blow up my own seal. Nobody's soul is taken. Next up, we have one copy of Orichalcos Eye, a classic card amongst Orichalcos Duelists. I've been using this card for off and on for most of my Orichalcos career. Basically, what this does is I can once per turn pay a thousand life points to add an Orichalcos card from my deck or graveyard to my... Oh no, never mind, misread it. Once per turn, you can pay a thousand life points to add an Orichalcos card from my deck to my hand. So it's only deck to hand, but that's okay, that's fine. Uh, next up, I run two copies of Orichalcos Transfer Draw. What this allows me to do is I can take a Orichalcos Mirror Knight Calling or Divine Serpent Monster in my hand, shuffle that baby back into the deck, and I draw two cards. Next up, we got one copy of Orichalcos Destroyer. I pay a thousand life points to basically destroy every card on my opponent's field. This is pretty much the o this is pretty much the only um removal per se that I have in this build. And it's the only removal I need in this build. This thing is broken and it's powerful. Essentially, you're combining Regeki and Harpy's Feather Duster into one card. Just like Lightning Storm. Next up, we got one copy of the all-powerful Grave Arm. Um this is the other removal that I forgot to mention. I actually had more removal than just <laughs> Orichalcos uh, Destroyer. Grave Arm is an anime card used by my Valentine in Battle City. And what this does is I can destroy one of my opponent's monsters. And while that monster is in the graveyard, it cannot be special summoned. This thing is really good if, say, you want to hit... Um, Hit um, a Vice of Starfrost monster or a Cash Tira, something, um, something basically that would threaten your board. This can deal with it. Next up is um, one copy of Orichalcos Shadow Seal. This is the only equip spell in my deck. And what this equip spell does is during Eber player's turn, you can discard this card from your hand to the graveyard to activate activate it, and if you do, target one monster your opponent controls, equip this card from your graveyard to that target. The equipped monster has its effects negated. Then add one Orichalcos card from your deck to your hand. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add it back to your hand inst instead. You can only activate one Orichalcos uh, Shadow Seal per turn. So, say for example, I equipped it to my opponent's monster, that monster's effects are negated, and I get an Orichalcos card for free because of it. That's simple. Next up, I got one copy of Beck in the Darkness. I send any monster to the graveyard. Any face-up monster to the graveyard, my I add. And this does not target, so this basically... It's rid of chaos max. One, then I'm gonna then I'm running one copy of the legendary city of Atlantis. And what this card does is it can it's a continuous spell card. Um this card is also always treated as an Orichalcos card, meaning with um most Orichalcos effects I have, I can search it. Cannot be activated unless you control a face-up Orichalcos field spell. Once per turn only, if you control four or more Orichalcos cards on your field with different names, except an Orichalcos field spell, you can draw two cards. You can only control one, the legendary city of Atlantis, on the field. So essentially, this is additional draw power. Then we get to the trap cards. First up, 
anti orikalkos detonation seal. Um, this is a pretty good trap card for an orikalkos deck like this one. And here's why. I destroy a seal of orikalkos on the field, whether it's my own or my opponent's, ignoring its effects. Then I destroy all monsters on the field that were affected by the seal of orikalkos. And then I inflict 300 damage to both players' life points equal to the number of monsters that were destroyed by this effect. So essentially, um, say I have this face down, I activate it, I destroy my opponent's seal of Oricalcos, and the monsters that were affected, infected by their seal, they get destroyed, and we both take 300 for each. Next up, we got... One copy of Oricalcos, Oricalco, Oricalcos Counter. I almost forgot the name there. <laughs> this is a very handy counter trap. Here's what it does. If your opponent activates a card effect, you can activate this, uh, you can activate this effect on the field or discard it from your hand. Negate the effect of that card and send it to the graveyard, ignoring its effects. So essentially, this is a way for me to deal with deal with my opponent's seal of Oricalcos. I basically, once they activate their seal, I pitch this from my hand to negate and destroy it. And this is a really nice spell speed free negation. It's not spell speed four, but spell speed three is quite nice. Next up, we got two copies of my favorite revival card of all time, Rebirth Tablet. How it works is when one of my is I can only activate this when one of my monsters is destroyed by battle. I can special summon any monster from my graveyard, including the monster that was just destroyed. This is a wonderful piece of remo of resurrection ability for this type of deck because I'll be doing a lot of resurrecting over time. And then for the final card of my deck, Ori Calcos Concealing Soul. Now, what Orichalcos Concealing Sword does is as follows. If this card is activated, flip all monsters your opponent controls into face-down defense position. Your opponent cannot change their battle positions as long as this card remains face-up on the field. But during my main phase, I can choose to discard... Not discard. I can choose to destroy this card. So basically, I activate this. I pretty much put all my monsters, my opponent controls, in the face down defense position, and their battle positions cannot be changed as long as I control this. But during my main phase, I can choose to destroy this whenever I like. So I can keep it there. So that is the main deck, folks. Now it's time for me to show you the extra deck, starting with the Dark Synchro lineup. So, basically, um, what we got here first and foremost, let me just get everybody organized. There we go. Perfect. Hold on a minute, folks. My dog is barking. Hold on. Okay, people, I'm back. Sorry about that. <laughs> Okay, we're going to start with the Dark Synchro portion of my extra deck. First up, we have one copy of Hundred Eyes Dragon. This is the full-blown anime version from Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. He pretty much gains every Dark Monsters effect that's in my graveyard. All Dark Monsters that are in my graveyard, he gets their effects. Every single one of them. So you can make this guy completely broken with any dark monsters you like to dump in your grave. But that's not the only thing he does. Um, if this card attacks, my opponent cannot activate spell or trap cards until the end of the damage step. And if he gets destroyed by battle and sent to the grave, I can add a card from my deck to my hand. So he uh, so has searchability. He has an ancient gear golem-like effect where if he attacks, my opponent cannot activate sp spell or traps until the end of the damage step. And well, and um, and also, um, while this card is face up on the field, it gains the effects of all dark monsters in my graveyard. So, have fun dumping the most broken dark monsters and dual monsters in my graveyard. In the graveyard, not my graveyard. Sorry. Uh, anyway, next up we have one copy of Demonic Storm Dragon. 
Um, what this guy does is he's a dwarf level 8 dragon, 3,000, 3,000. If you've seen my Neil Ori Kalkos uh, Nightmare Mode deck profile, um, I, he's one of the headliners in that deck. But he's also a headliner here, too. Cannot be destroyed by battle except by a dragon-type monster. If this card is special summoned, the effects of all other monsters on the field are negated. Once per turn, if your opponent activates a spell or trap, you can discard one card from your hand to negate the activation. If you do, destroy it. Once per turn only, you can target a monster in your graveyard. Then, this card gains that monster's effects until the end of the turn. You can only control one demonic storm dragon on the field. So, basically, I can use him, copy the Orikalko Shaman in my graveyard, and then basically use uh, Shaman's effects, um, use the Sh Orikalko Shaman's effects that he absorbed for that turn only. So that's more ways to abuse my Shaman. Next up, we have Lilith, Queen of Fates. So it's another, this is another card that I had in my Orikalkos Nightmare Mode deck profile, but it's used here too. So essentially, once per turn only, if this card destroys a monster, you can special summon one level, one monster from your hand. That's level is lower than the destroyed monster's level. This card gains 200 attack and defense for each fiend monster in your graveyard. So big beat stick, but also really good at destroying monsters. Next up, we have Dark Chargers of the Gate. This is a level, this is a negative level 5, negative level 5 Dark Synchro Monster with this effect. Uh, once per turn only, you can banish a zombie from your graveyard to destroy one monster your opponent controls. Uh, so, I, I, so, so, yeah, this thing can detonate monsters as well. And it's got 2,100 attack points. Next up, we have the final Dark Synchro Monster with Celeste Archangel of Solitude. So what this card does is if this card destroys a an opponent's monster by battle, banish it. Also, special on one Solitude token to one of your opponent, one of your opponent's unoccupied spell and trap card zones. That Solitude token remains in that Spell and Trap zone for the next three turns. Your opponent cannot set any Spell and Traps on a Spell and Trap and Trap zone that is occupied by a Solitude token. If this card leaves the field, destroy all Solitude tokens on the field. Then you, you gain life points equal to the number of destroyed Solitude tokens times 500. So, really good beat stick that has a 2650 attack, 2000 defense, good life point gaining effect, and very good way to shut down your opponent's bone trap card zones. Now we're going to get to the Xyz monsters, starting with two copies of Orikalkos Gem Dragon. Um, basically what he does is, this card's name is also always treated as Orikalkos Dragon, and, um, I can detach a material to add an Orikalkos card from my deck or graveyard to my hand. You can detach a material to banish one card on the field. You only use each effect of Orikalkos Gem Dragon once per turn only, and you can only control one Orikalkos Gem Dragon. So, basically, you use him to search for various Orikalkos cards from your deck or graveyard and re-add them, them to your hand. Next up, we have good old Orikalkos Warlock. And what Warlock does is, once per turn, you can detach material to activate, to activate one of the following effects. I can either destroy a, a card on the field, or I can banish a random card from your opponent's hand. Next up, I have one copy of number 200 Orikalkos Soul Eater. This is pretty much the avatar of my de of, of the Orikalkos challenge. And what he does is he requires two level he requires he requires two level five Orikalkos monsters. Once per turn, you can detach material, attach one Orika one monster on your opponent's side of the field to this card as, as a material. This card gains 200 attack for each material attached to it. This card, if this card would be destroyed, 
you can detach a material from this card instead. So say if you so say for example if you're wanting to destroy it in any way, shape, or form, whether it's by battle or by card effect, I can detach a material from it instead. And also he gains 200 attack for each material attached to him, so he can get pretty big. Even if his original attack is 2,500, that's still big. Next up, we have the final custom card of the Xyz lineup, Orichalcos Evil Gear. And what Orichalcos Evil Gear does is he requires two level four, four Orichalcos monsters or machine monsters. And, he, and his name is also always treated as Dark Gear Girgian X. You can detach a material from this card to add an Orichalcos card or one machine monster from your deck to your hand. You can detach material to banish one gadget monster in your graveyard, the specimen of the gadget monster from your hand. You can only use each effect of Orichalcos Evil Gear once per turn only. You can only control one Orichalcos Evil Gear. So, very good searchability on a good monster. Now we get to the final four cards of this uh, of, of the deck. We have double double X, Utopic Dark Infinity. We have number tw number 20 Giga Brilliant, Naruto the Moral Leader, and last but not least, Time Thief Redoer. And that folks completes the Ori Kalkos Hard Difficulty Deck Profile. I really hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. If you want to see more Ori Kalkos related content or other custom card content like this, smash that like button, ring a ding that notification bell, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. I will have the uh I will um have the current Ori Kalkos challenge rules in the description bar be uh, below. But just so you all know, um, I will be revising the Ori Kalkos Challenge rules um, uh, at, the, at the time of the next Ori Kalkos Death Profile, which will be very, very soon. So keep a lookout for that. Um, but, uh, but, like, but like I said, if you all want to um, see more custom card content or more Ori Kalkos related content, Smash that like button, ring a ding that notification bell, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Um, also, if you want to challenge the hard difficulty or any one of my other difficulty models, feel free to look me up on Discord. My name is Yu-Gi-Oh! Master 88. I'm there. I'm, I'm not that hard to find. But anyway, that is it for the Ori Calcos. Our difficulty deck profile. I hope you I hope you I thank you all so much for watching. So much for listening. But until then, this is Yu-Gi-Oh! Master 88 saying see you later.